establishment, if you go back 25, 35 years when Jim was covering, would just say it doesn't exist. A total mind game, like a Jedi mind trick. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Move along and laugh at everyone. But now the system's lost so much credibility because once you discover one part of the shadow state, then you discover, wow, what we thought was the state is just the front. There's this whole thing, and that's why they like to meet here, is it's right in the heart of what Eisenhower warned us of, the military-industrial complex. And, and it really is upsetting them that now it's not just the puppet presidents and prime ministers that come and go. We're now addressing the real power structure. Yeah, and if you look at the, uh, at the history of Bilderberg, which is what I'm writing for my, for my next piece, uh, is just going back over how it was born, and it's born out of the CIA and MI6. I mean, you can, you've got, I'm going to use a photograph, actually, you can see it online. I'm going to use it in my piece of the head of the OSS, William Donovan, sitting next to Joseph Rettinger, and uh, sitting next to Thomas Braden, who is who's in charge of Operation Mockingbird, and in charge of the uh, European arm of the AC. Uh, U, uh, was it American Committee on United Europe, ACUE, which was headed up by Donovan, and these are the people that pump money through the European movement, which is the predecessor really of Bilderberg. And so this, this place is, Bilderberg was spawned by a mixture of uh, American and British intelligence. Yeah, it's and, come and, back and, home. And bankers, here. yeah. That's it. They're cre well, let me tell us more about your piece. They created the, the corporate world government, where they're exempt from the laws, and they put a bunch on us. Yeah, and... Uh, I think that when people talk about, uh, who are perhaps less informed talk about Bilderberg as well, I just, I just think they're just getting together to, to try and, you know, sort out, they're just trying to sort the world out for us, you know. I mean, in a sense, that's true, but not in quite the way that I think people mean that when they say it. And uh, I think there's a, uh, you, you talked about this Jedi mind trick of, of, of what's happened. I think that what's happened, one of the big things that happened is that the lid has been kept so tightly on this story for so long that the mainstream media has kind of forgotten about it and now that when the alternative media is talking about it they're sort of the mainstream media can't bear the fact they don't know about this thing so they almost shut their minds so they're going yeah come on it, look it's nothing it's nothing if it was something i'd know about it you know like well, let me tell you from four years ago the police were nice four years ago and did their job and were constitutional this year they were just they couldn't it was like i was a rock star and they were looking at me friendly and shaking my hand and and oh yeah and then behind the scenes went oh yeah we know we know they're mafia and i'm like the police are like totally on our side now total one i mean this is a 180. really uh, yeah it was yeah, amazing today yeah it was like wow yeah they I mean, finally get it that's the mafia i'm not the bad guy i'm the good guy well i remember in um, spain one of the extraordinary things was how how much on the side of the uh, protesters the police were even up to the chief of the police locally you know some, some same thing happened in switzerland yeah i mean and they uh, they, they were literally saying, yes, we understand. I mean, two days before the Spanish Bilderberg, the police were marching up and down the streets for their pay, you know, which had just been cut. And people were saying, look, you, you're pointing in the wrong direction here. You need to turn around. We're not the, you know, the protesters were saying, we're not the enemies. And the Spanish protesters were very sophisticated, and they spoke to the, to the, uh, to the Spanish police and explained the situation. And the police were completely, uh, you know, cognizant of what was going on. And uh, I, I think that is changing. That's an extraordinary thing, because once, once the, the, the system loses control of the police, then that's sort of it, isn't it? Well, that's what happened to Ceausescu in Romania. Mark Anderson, where do you think Bilderberg is today? I mean, is this not the beginning of a rout, what you witnessed in um, the high mountains uh, there in the Swiss Alps last year? What do you think they're thinking right now? And, 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 and what do you think of what Charlie said about, really, Bilderberg is the new world order? Well, yeah, the Honorable John Rarick, the late congressman, confirmed in uh, uh, remarks in the congressional record that a Joseph Redinger was behind this and the intel thing is is very true the intel roots of this and a lot of people ascribe the founding of this to Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands of course he was the figurehead but it was the intel group that Charlie spoke of that really was the roots of this and then uh, they got so many years before the internet came along and before everyone had a camera on their cell phone before cell phones of course and, they, you know, they got away largely unscathed, but now, probably like NATO, they're having to redefine themselves. Uh, there was a bit of a rout in Switzerland. Um, they had bad weather coming in. They, they got in late and left early. Um, there was a, a warrant for Henry Kissinger's arrest floating around, this and that. We asked the police if they were going to do anything about it. They just sort of shrugged their shoulders. The most they did for us was give a cake to David Rockefeller for his birthday. <laughs> to add a little bit of, of wit and humor to the overall thing. But, yeah, there's no doubt that they're, part of their discussions, I surmise at least, is going to be 
you know, well, their leaders are getting way up in years. You know, Kissinger and Rockefeller, no matter how many organ transplants or fancy drugs they may use, um, I say that somewhat wryly, but, uh, you know, they can't live forever. So uh, with their uh, octogenarian leaders uh, turning into fossils, I, I don't know that, that they can, uh, you know, go, go much further without uh, – maybe breaking off into separate committees, being a little less obvious about all meeting under one sure. roof. Um, it's a little difficult to say, but I'm really working hard this year uh, to amplify what Charlie and AFP do to get area and regional and national media on this. In fact, this year is quite an interesting one because they've got a new chairman. Uh, uh, um, Etienne Davignon is finally gone. And that was some African weapon stuff. He's in a little bit of trouble right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, the new guy is, is, you know, he's 57 years old. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a younger guy. He's Henri de Castries and he's the head of AXA group. They have big AXA insurance. They're the, something like the ninth biggest company in the world by revenue. So he's a, you know, he, he is the young guy. And if you look at some of the people coming in, like, I'm going to mispronounce his name, I'm sure, Peter Thiel or Thiel. I don't well, know. they're bringing in all yeah, the Facebook yeah, people. Exactly. So the yeah. Dragon X news private space group, they're giving our infrastructure to them. So, you know, they are reinventing themselves. They, they, Kissinger stepped aside, and we're looking at we're looking at a new generation this year. And uh, so, yeah, they're, they're not the kind of people to get left behind. Yeah, what do you think of that, uh, Mark Anderson, American Free Press? What do you make of the fact that they are bringing in a new tech guard, uh, the Schmitz of uh, Google, the Apple people creeping around? Looks like the Panopticon NSA, uh, its children that it created are actually now becoming the new Bilderberg. You know, that, that's probably indicative of the uh, collusion and cooperation among uh, high tech and intel and how that ties into the overall intelligence community and how that ties into Bilderberg and laws. You know, Congress is trying to pass all these laws with these alphabet soup names that would, um, um, you know, make these companies share uh, user data with government agencies. Uh, there's been one bill after another trying to get through Congress, uh, ACTA, you know, PIPA, all these different ones. 